Do you remember this chihuahua that wanted some Taco Bell? Psst. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Well, that little dog was at the centerpiece of their main advertising campaign in the late 1990s. He was pretty much in all of their commercials, and maybe as a first or second grader, I used to love them. How couldn't I? He was an adorable little dog that would talk in a funny voice about Taco Bell. Years later, in Spanish class, when we first learned how to conjugate the verbs, I got so excited when I finally understood where that yo quiero part was coming from. Oh, and here, I just learned about this. That dog's name was Gidget, who sadly passed away in 2009 at 15 years old, but in 2002, he was featured in a Geico commercial where Gidget and the Gecko pass each other as they're both auditioning to become the new Geico spokesperson. I love everything about that, Geico hitting the mark with their commercials once again, but looking back at that original Taco Bell campaign, despite its popularity, I don't think it was all that effective. Looking at their sales from around that time, they kept increasing at the same rate as before the campaign, meanwhile they spent $500 million on it, not to mention this multi-million dollar lawsuit that resulted from it. In fact, the main reason that they ended it after only a few years is because the franchisees were pushing to replace it with something that did a better job in featuring the food itself and the freshness of it. The campaign that they replaced it with, by the way, was Think Outside the Bun, which I truly believe is the main idea behind their success, but I'm getting way ahead of myself here. Taco Bell is the biggest, most successful Mexican restaurant in existence. It's been an impressive run because it's been that way for decades, since the 1960s. Chipotle is catching up, but they're still about half the size, and that is by far the closest anyone is ever gotten. It's really crazy. Taco Bell is over 7,000 locations that have been consistently generating over $10 billion in sales each year, and they're not just growing from building new locations either. Their sales at their existing locations have been increasing as well. So given that they've spent the last 50-something years at the top of their industry, I thought it'd be a fun idea to take a closer look at how they've done it while trying to identify some of the biggest reasons behind that success. For the first of these reasons, it makes sense to go back to the beginning and talk about their founder, Glenn Bell. That is his name, clearly sharing it with an actual object, and I could see that as being both good and bad. On the positive end, it's given them some great branding with that bell in the logo, the mission style buildings, and that great sound that they play in the commercials. But on the negative end, that name is so perfectly fitting that the man himself tends to get overlooked. I am happy to feature him because he is one of the most motivated and persistent people that I have ever seen. He built his business by identifying the trends around him, but also by figuring out less popular ways to capitalize on those trends. You'll see what I mean. At 20 years old, he served in the Marines as a cook during World War II, and when he returned home, he set out to open his own restaurant in San Bernardino, California, which is not too far from Los Angeles. Angeles. His main inspiration being McDonald's. He saw how much business they were getting and figured that he could do something similar. But I feel I need to clarify that sentence because McDonald's was not the international fast food giant that we know today. This was the 1940s. If you know the story, it was way before Ray Kroc became involved. It was when McDonald's was a drive-in restaurant local to San Bernardino. Statistically, I think we can say that Glenn Bell was among the first people in the world to even know about them. To raise capital, he literally sold a refrigerator for a few hundred dollars, bought some materials, and personally built a tiny hot dog and hamburger stand. Probably the main difference from McDonald's was that you were meant to walk up to the building rather than drive up to it. He was the only person to work there, and the hours of operation were from 9 a.m. to midnight. After a couple of years, he closed that restaurant in favor of opening a new similar restaurant in the area. This one was located right across the street from a different restaurant that happened to sell Mexican food, including tacos, and I think you can see where this is going. He added tacos to his menu, figuring that that could be the big thing to differentiate him from McDonald's, and I have to say that he was completely right. In fact, that is the second reason on my list. He saw so much potential in selling tacos and other Mexican food that in 1954, he opened a restaurant dedicated to them called Taco Tia. As a side note, all of those hours that he was spending at his restaurants were likely contributing to his marital problems, to a point where he got divorced and lost a lot of money in the process. Oddly enough, potentially the reason that we don't have a large chain called Taco Tia today because the lack of funding forced him to open it with a partner. And once they had expanded to only three locations, that partner didn't want to go any further, so Glenn Bell sold his share of Taco Tia to open yet another restaurant. The new one was not Taco Bell, it was called El Taco, and he had three profile partners, two members of the Los Angeles Rams football team and Phil Crosby, who was the son of Bing Crosby. Finally, in 1962, he sold his share of that partnership to open his own 
restaurant in Downey, California that was called Taco Bell, and that was the official start of it. Can you believe that it was his fifth attempt at a restaurant after 14 years of trying? But back to the tacos, you'll notice how the word taco was part of the name of all of his Mexican restaurants. That was a big selling point, and the thing that made them different. We have to remember that this was a time when very few people in the United States had ever even had a taco. The company says that early on, many of their customers would walk up and say that they wanted a taco because they didn't know how to pronounce it. They had never heard the word before. And tacos, in general, are pretty good, right? So with such a motivated person being among the first to sell them, it makes sense that they would start expanding across the country. Glenn Bell has said, I always smile when I hear people say that they never had a taco until Taco Bell came to town. Can you imagine that? It's a little controversial, but he sometimes gets credited with inventing the pre-made hard taco shell. He did it so that they would already be ready to fill and they'd be able to serve more customers faster. I just want to convey that if you're from America and you like tacos, much like myself, specifically the ones with the hard shell, Glenn Bell is easily the most responsible for making them popular. Within two years, there were 15 Taco Bells, all owned by Glenn Bell, and that is where they, again, taking the lead from McDonald's, started franchising, allowing them to add over 300 locations by the end of the decade and 868 of them by 1978, which leads me to my next reason behind their success, Pepsi. See, back then, Pepsi was looking to diversify from their sodas and other beverages into the fast food business, and they were not hesitating. In 1977, they bought Pizza Hut for $315 million, instantly giving them control of the largest chain of pizza restaurants in the country, and now they were looking to do it with tacos. So not even a year later, they bought Taco Bell for $125 million. It was a deal where Glenn Bell traded his stock in Taco Bell for his stock in Pepsi. And just to finish up his story, only seven years later, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, but lived for another 25 years before dying in 2010 at the age of 86. The reason I have Pepsi on the list is because they were the larger company that put in the resources to really take Taco Bell to that next level. When they bought it in 1978, there were less than 1,000 locations, and when they got rid of it almost 30 years later, there were over 6,500, meaning it's more likely than not that the Taco Bell near you was first opened during these years. In 1997, Pepsi grouped them together with their other fast food restaurants, mainly Pizza Hut and KFC, and spun that off into its own company initially known as Triarch, but later changed to Yum Brands, and that's where they've been ever since. Moving on to the fourth reason behind their success, I have to say, is their menu items. Obviously, the menu is important at any restaurant, but Taco Bell specifically is famous for their crazily named forever changing items. I made a video before that referred to Taco Bell as a Mexican restaurant, and many of the viewers took issue with that. I've actually been doing it in this video as well, so before you comment, I get it. The stuff that you get from Taco Bell is way different from what you would get from an authentic Mexican restaurant. They have actually tried to open them in Mexico multiple times in 1992 and 2007, and neither one of those was successful. To this day, over 90% of those 7,400 Taco Bells are in the United States, and that's because they have done a fantastic job in adopting Mexican foods for an American market. I don't want to go through every item that they've ever offered, but some of the more notable ones in recent times anyway, it would be the Gordita in 1998, that was a big hit. Mountain Dew Baja Blast was actually introduced as a Taco Bell exclusive in 2004. The following year, they had their most successful product launch ever at the time with the Crunchwrap Supreme, and then in 2012, their most successful product launch was replaced by the Doritos Locos Taco, selling over 100 million of them within 10 weeks. Since then, they've also introduced the Quesa Lupa and Nacho Fries. Like I said, there's always something new, and it's going to have a wild name, and it's probably going to appeal to a lot of their customers. My final reason behind their success is going to help tie everything together, it's their marketing. I mean, it is more than 20 years later, and I'm still thinking about that Chihuahua, so there's something to be said about that. But another example of some of their memorable advertising would be in the early 1990s, when they had their big 59-79-99 campaign. I apologize, because you will be singing that for the rest of the day. Around that time, they were looking to become more of a value brand by cutting their costs and lowering their prices. The biggest way they did it was by starting to deliver the food to the restaurants already prepared. You know, the tomatoes would already be cut up or whatever else, and that allowed the kitchens to become more efficient so that they can reduce the size of them and expand the dining areas. They became more customer focused, and that involved lowering their prices that was advertised through these catchy commercials. Another example would be their fourth meal campaign, starting 
starting in 2006. It emphasized how so many people were going to Taco Bell late at night, so they cleverly came up with a name for that meal. Then to expand on that, in 2014, when they started serving breakfast nationwide, they advertised it as the first meal. And then how about sports? A big demographic for them has been younger, college-age males, so they've taken advantage of that by advertising in certain sporting events. They were a sponsor of the first X Games back in 1995, and starting in 2012 at the NBA All-Star Weekend, you may have watched the Taco Bell Skills Challenge. Movie tie-ins have also been effective, specifically with Batman in 1989 and the Star Wars prequels. In the movie Demolition Man, set in 2032, they have a running joke where Taco Bell is the only fast food restaurant remaining, and it's like this really fancy place. In 1996, they had this big April Fool's joke where they took out ads in the newspaper saying that they bought the Liberty Bell. It wasn't true, of course, but it was a fun way to get everyone's attention. There are so many examples that I could give, but I think you get the idea. Here, I want to challenge you right now to think of as many Taco Bell slogans as you can. Pause the video if you need a second to think, but I'm going to go ahead and put on screen some of the bigger ones that I've heard in the past. Personally, that is more than I could think of for maybe any other company. My favorite of these being Think Outside the Bun. It's obviously a play on words from Think Outside the Box, and it perfectly expresses how Taco Bell is unique. We've already seen how they were essentially established because Glenn Bell wanted to offer something different than hamburgers, and that was a big part of why it caught on across the country as quickly and effectively as it did. I just think that slogan says so much in such a simple way. In fact, if I had to explain why Taco Bell was successful in just a few words, I would say it's because they thought outside the bun. Alright, let me know in the comments, what do you think of Taco Bell? I think it's an incredible story, potentially one of the more culturally impactful ones that I've covered on this channel, especially for anyone who likes tacos. I mean, how many Tuesdays across the country would be different without them? Also, as always, I want to point out that my list doesn't include every reason behind their success, just the ones that I personally found to be the most significant or interesting, so be sure to tell me if you think something should be added to it. And finally, what do you think of the restaurant itself, and what is your favorite thing to get when you go there? I'm looking forward to reading those answers, and any other thoughts you have about Taco Bell, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.